once upon a time long 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 back when the kurukshetra war was finally over and the last surviving warriors remained from the side of the kurus and pandavas when yudhishthir maharaj was finally coronated as the emperor of the entire world once yudhishthir maharaj goes to lord krishna and he asks a question which is a very interesting question which i am sure you must have also asked god sometimes or you might have seen somebody else asking this to god but of course we may ask that question to god but yudhishthir maharaj and the pandavas they are the first ones who actually should ask this question to god so yudhishthir maharaj goes to lord krishna and he asks that oh my dear keshava he is always addressed as keshav in the mahabharat and he is also addressed as vasudev one who is the son of vasudev vasudev is krishna's father we all know that so he says my dear keshava me my brothers my mother kunti and draupadi we all were extremely pious we never did anything wrong we never wished bad for anybody unlike the kauravas did always we never even there was no thought against anybody not to speak of doing something we always wished the good for everybody but <laughs> nothing remained we never committed any sin but nothing remained even our sons five of them they were brutally assassinated in the dead of the night by ashwatthama five sons of draupadi our wife draupadi she was most chaste but she was insulted she was humiliated in the assembly in the asat sabha as vyasdev writes asat sabha we lost our grand sire bhishma pitama he is not there with us anymore we lost the great dronacharya from whom we all learned how to fight <laughs> and protect our kingdom nobody remained all our cousins the 100 kuru kauravas they perished we never wanted to do all this but at the end yet nothing remains with us only parikshit maharaj is the one who is remaining parikshit maharaj is the son of abhimanyu he is the son of abhimanyu and uttara who also just survived somehow because ashwatthama had sent a brahmastra to kill not uttara uttara's womb <laughs> that's the interesting part here but of course lord krishna protected him at the end and it is said parikshit maharaj was having all the qualities of the pandavas all the five so why 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 <laughs> basically yudhishthir maharaj was asking him why we <laughs> many times he will also ask this question to god maybe why me <laughs> well of course in our case the law of karma always plays in their case also maybe it played out in case of the pandavas but lord krishna says something very interesting here this verse which is there is very 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 famous at least those who know the shrimad bhagavatam and the mahabharat lord krishna says to yudhishthir yudhishthir maharaj that yasya ham anugrahami harishye tadhanam sanay he says that when i offer my special blessings to somebody no it's not blessings when i offer my special blessings to somebody again not blessings s p e c i a l <laughs> when i offer my special most 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 special blessings to somebody i take away everything which they have and when yudhishthir maharaj heard this he was shocked <laughs> so 
then yudhishthir maharaj realized oh yes krishna has actually blessed us because he has taken away everything from us yes but the question is why does he do why why does he do that to us or at least to the great souls like bhishma to great personalities like yudhishthir maharaj to personalities like draupadi to personalities like arjuna why 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 of course for them krishna does it because they set the standard for spirituality the pandavas are directly sitting and having lunch with krishna imagine if god was sitting there and you are having lunch <laughs> just imagine you know you are having dinner or lunch now and suddenly lord krishna comes and he's like hey what's in the menu <laughs> now you may artificially say oh yeah yeah you know today this is there in the menu that's there in the menu we'll have this we'll have that we will all order special uh maybe some special vegetarian dish from taj <laughs> for you because you are god <laughs> but in the back of your mind it will always be going oh my god oh god you are here oh god please tell me two years back three years back this thing happened why did you let that happen to me <laughs> i have gone so much to banaras i have gone to mathura i have gone to vrindavan i have gone to haridwar i have gone to kanchipuram also i have done so much still you let that happen to me why god you are so bad you are too bad <laughs> imagine if god comes will you do that or not but yudhishthir maharaj and the pandavas they never ever ever asked this question to krishna they never asked can you imagine that's the standard of spiritual life that they have set so krishna does that sometimes because he wants that we only be attached to him and not to all the mundane materialistic useless pleasures of this world <laughs> because whatever you are attached to gives you suffering and the more the attachment the more the suffering should i repeat the more the attachment the more the suffering you can never suffer if something is taken away from you which you, which you were not attached to but suppose you are attached to something and that thing is taken away from you you are like oh my god it becomes unbearable people commit suicides people they they go insane sometimes they stop taking bath they they stop eating they indulge in all kinds of things to forget that so that's very difficult when you are attached but that's what krishna does sometimes he's telling you that anyways one day at the day of or at the time of your death you will be stripped of everything that you have now your young beautiful hot sexy wife she's not going to be there <laughs> maybe she's there beside you at the end of your life but she can't help you at that time because you're dying <laughs> maybe she can give her kidney if your kidney has failed but still if you have to die you will die <laughs> she can't do anything your young beautiful handsome tall dark million dollar husband he also can't do anything if you are destined to die at that time your relatives your friends your best friends your ex boyfriends your ex girlfriends your chacha mama phupha <laughs> nobody can help you at that time because that is the time when everybody is tested they say that during the time of death one remembers a hundred lifetimes it's like a flashback it's happening back to back zup 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 <laughs> and whatever you are most attached to that that is the point where the footage will stop tak zup pause <laughs> i'm attached to my wife oh stop i'm attached to my husband oh 
stop <laughs> then we will take another birth by thinking of that person or maybe i wanted a million dollars i wanted a bentley i wanted a rolls royce i wanted a mercedes yes then again punarapi jananam punarapi maranam <laughs> you again take birth that is the cycle of janma janmantar that cycle is repeating we have been doing it from millions and millions and millions of lifetimes husbands are becoming wives wives are becoming husbands brother sister father mother they are exchanging roles that's what is happening so when krishna takes away something from you he is giving you a trailer <laughs> movie trailer <laughs> <laughs> suppose you lost something then krishna is telling you look this is just 1% of what is going to happen to you at that time so from now itself you start preparing and that is how ketu blesses us actually that's the ultimate blessing which he gives because see ketu is headless sometimes he can give you so much suffering that you feel as if you don't exist only yes that can happen sometimes or you you might feel that why am i existing there is no purpose i mean why should i exist better i die <laughs> or am i living or am i simply existing i mean there's a big difference some people only exist they don't live very few live when they are existing Did I say it right? Hopefully, <laughs> Ketu is headless. My head is also going. <laughs> yeah, that's what the reality is. So that is how Ketu decides that. Look, I will give you a trailer. So whenever something is taken away from you, always take it as a trailer. Because in Hindi they say, "Na picture abhi baaki hai mere dost." <laughs> the movie is still remaining. The movie will. come when that moment is coming there are also places where they say that at the time of death the amount of pain which a person experiences is equivalent to 40000 scorpion bites simultaneously some say it's 10000 some say it's 40000 but well how does it matter how much it is it's even if it's 10000 my god imagine one scorpion stinging you oh my god It's like death, but that's one by ten thousand percent. I mean, one by ten thousandth of death. How painful! How miserable a person is when scorpion bites him. So next time, when something is taken away from you, do not curse God. Understand that He is giving you a facility. by which you can remember him at the time of death because that is what lord krishna says yad gatvana ni vartante tad dham paramam mama which means if you think of him antakale cha maam eva smaran muktva kale varam hetu nane na kaunte that beautiful shloka is there antakale cha maam eva at the end of your life antakale cha maam eva <laughs> smaran muktva kalevaram what you are thinking the mind where it stops that's it then the next birth is decided and if you are thinking of materialistic objects that time which will definitely happen if you have zero spirituality in your life there are some people who say that okay till the time i am 60 i will enjoy yes i will do whatever i want just party <laughs> maze karenge mazak karo life mein mazak karo khali ye bhagwan dharm ye sab baad mein aayega <laughs> and after 60 i will go to haridwar and i will take a mala and i will just chant ram 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 what do you think lord ram is so foolish bewakuf samajh rakha hai kya bhagwan ko <laughs> Hmm. 
You cannot cheat a person also these days in Kali Yuga. You think you will cheat God like that? And even if you do that and Lord Ram accepts you when you do that, do you think that when you die after 60 years of your material scam, I would say, <laughs> do you think that you will be able to remember God? No, it's impossible. That will only happen if we have daily spiritual practices inculcated in our life. It doesn't matter. You are married or you are single. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have children or you don't. It doesn't matter you are in New Zealand or you are in Haridwar. <laughs> it doesn't matter you are in Mars or you are in Moon. <laughs> it doesn't matter you are a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. Your Spirituality is independent of your material circumstances. It does not, of course, it depends. But it, it does not mean that if you are having this or having that, you cannot do spiritual practices. It doesn't mean that. Some people say that, oh, do we need to go to the forest? No, you don't need to go to the forest. Who said you need to go to the forest? You can be sitting right there in Bombay <laughs> yes Bombay Mumbai Calcutta Kolkata whichever city you like or you can come to my place Gohati <laughs> you can also chant the name of God there you can read the Srimad Bhagavatam there you can read it with your wife with your husband you can read with your children then you will realize what is going on in life. You can read the Brahma Samhita. Many people have been telling me that the prayers of the Brahma Samhita are beautiful. When you read the Brahma Samhita, you will understand the beauty of Lord Krishna. Venum kvananta maravinda dalaya takcham balahavatam samasitam budasundarangam Lakshmi Sahastra Satasambrama Sevya Manam Shamam Tribhanga Lalitam Niyata Prakasham Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Angani Asya Sakalendri Abriti Manti I mean I can go on and on <laughs> Shamam Tribhanga Lalitam Niyata Prakasham Shamam Tribhanga Lalitam Niyata Prakasham Tribhangi, you see, it's difficult to show like this. <laughs> I will try. <laughs> Is it possible? I don't know. It's ah, uh, it's ah, uh, no, no, it's yeah. This is the form. You see, I made it. <laughs> oh, did I made it right or wrong? I don't know. <laughs> the threefold bending form of Krishna. You will always see Lord Ram's photo. He's straight like this. But Krishna's photo, you will never see straight. You will see his his face is like this and his body is bent and then from the waist it is like this. That is Shyamam Tribhanga Lalitam Tribhanga Lalit Niyata Prakasham It's illuminating the entire spiritual realm. Lakshmi Sahastra Satasambra Masevya Manam Lakshmi Sahastra Thousands of Lakshmis in the spiritual world. They are rendering seva. They say in the spiritual world, in Vaikuntha, there is no dust. But the Lakshmis are wiping the floor of Vaikuntha. Why? Because they want to make it more clean. <laughs> they want that it's so spotless. Although it is already spotless, but they are still doing it. You know. <laughs> So there you go. That's the lesson which uh, Ketu wants us to know that one day anyways, everything will be ripped apart. So next time when you feel like cursing Ketu or cursing God, then always remember this shloka which I said. Yes, yaham anugranami harishyeta dharam sanaya. Just think it's like a trailer. And the full movie is going to come very soon. All right. There you go. If you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to it. <laughs> and if you are in a consultation, then please go down to the link below. 
you'll find the link to my website there and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with anybody who keeps cursing god for taking away something from his or her life okay until next time wish you good luck bye bye see you